The other people that you mentioned, Stefan and Bookie, do you know those two people? Yes. Had you dealt with those two people, Stefan and Bookie? Yes. What kind of quantities initially were you getting? Were you and Kabani Savage getting from Stefan and Bookie? At one point, we started off getting four ounces, five ounces, and then we started getting soda bottles. Then we started getting two liter bottles and then four soda bottles and it kept going up to a half a gallon. Okay, do you know another person by the name of Lamont Smith? Yes. Okay, did you have some nicknames for Lamont Smith? Black. Okay, Black? Did you sometimes refer to him as simply Mont? Well, Mont, yes. Okay, what was Lamont Smith doing, if anything, when you were working the oil with Kabani Savage? He was with us. He was around us all the time. And when you say with us and around us, where would he hang around with you? All of us hung out in Kabani Savage's house. Was that a common meeting place back then? That was the only meeting place back then. This person, Bookie, did there come a time when you had a conversation with Bookie about a robbery that he had undergone? Yes. All right. And that was a robbery of what? Of oils. All right. After Bookie was robbed of oil, did you see any large shipments or large quantities of oil shortly after that robbery? Yes, Kabani and Lamont came to me and they got a bunch of oils and gave me some to put down on where I was at in my area at 6th Street. I'm sorry, which street? The area that I had on 6th Street. All right, did you talk to Kabani Savage about this large shipment that came just after the robbery of Bookie? Well, it was a short conversation and he was more of on the point, well, that's the game. Who said that's the game? Kabani. After that event, what happened, if anything, with regard to the amounts of oil that you and Kabani Savage were selling on the streets in North Philadelphia? We grew bigger than what we was and eventually had moved into more cocaine. Now, before we get into the cocaine, I had asked you before about, you went back to jail on a violation of probation, is that right? Yes. Okay, how many times did you get violated for probation or parole violation? Twice. Okay, what were those for? One was non-reporting. The other one was a mistake. They said I did drugs and I never did drugs in my life. Okay, what was the first one that you got violated for, for not reporting for your probation officer? How much did you serve for that? Six months. All right. The second time, the one that you referred to as a mistake, how much time did you serve there? 30 days. All right. Now you mentioned at the same time that you were selling PCP, was cocaine also being sold? Yes. What amounts of cocaine were being sold by Kabani Savage at that time? At that time, when we was moving to wet, moving PCP together, he was moving ounce, nine and a halves, ounces at that time up to at least a half a brick okay now let's break those down a little bit an ounce i think we all know what that is when you mentioned a nine and a half nine and a half what nine and a half ounces of coke when you refer to a half a brick what is a brick a brick is a kilo of cocaine okay so a half a brick is a half a kilo of cocaine Yes. 500 grams? 500 grams. After the liquid PCP business picked up, did the amounts of cocaine also pick up? Yes. All right. Again, does this relate to approximately, just for the time frame, approximately 1998 to 1999, that time frame? Yes. All right. Now, I asked you before about the liquid PCP and the sources. Who was Kabani Savage, to your knowledge, getting cocaine from at that time? At that time, it was Gerald, and then afterwards, after he had moved up and started getting bigger, and after the come up with the, the come up means the robbery, it went to Jerry, his cousin in Miami. Okay, so let's take those one step at a time then. 
You mentioned Gerald, and that refers to whom? Bubby. Okay, is that Gerald Thomas then? Yes. Okay, you mentioned that Cabani had a cousin Jerry in Miami? Yes. Meaning Miami, Florida? Yes. Okay, does that refer to someone you came to know as Jerry Hampton? Yes. All right, and then you also know a person, a person who became known to you as Pumpkin? Yes. Who is Pumpkin? Pumpkin was Cabani's brother. When you say his brother, do you mean a blood brother? He wasn't his blood brother, but he really grew up with him. Like they really was, they was like brothers. Okay, is that somebody who you know now to be Ronald Walston? Yes. Okay, where did Pumpkin come from? Pumpkin was, he had the corner of 8th and Butler. When you say he had the corner, what was his relationship to that corner of 8th and Butler? He owned that corner. He ran it. Okay, if you could explain that, please. What does it mean to own the corner? He ran all the drugs out on the corner, and everybody out there was working for Pumpkin. All right, did Cabani Savage and this person, Ronald Walston, also known as Pumpkin, did they have dealings? Yes. Did they have dealings together? Yes. All right, Mr. Coleman. Did there come a time when you learned something about something called recompression? Yes. Okay, who did you learn recompression from? Cabani Savage. All right, does this again refer to time in the late 1990s, 1998 to 99? Yes. Okay, what was it that Cabani Savage taught you about recompression? I was renting a house around the corner on Marshall, 6th Westmoreland and Marshall on 6th Street, around the corner from my mom's house. Cabani had brought a press over to put in my basement to use because he was, it was like four and a half at the time and four and a half plate and there was a nine ounce plate. Again, you're talking about four and a half what? Four and a half ounces of cocaine and nine ounces of cocaine. He had a plate for them sizes first. Okay. He was using the basement and then that's when he taught me how to do it. All right. Just so we're clear, when you say this time using the basement, you are referring to the basement of what place? Marshall Street first. Okay. What did Cabani show you? Could you tell the members of the jury what it was that he showed you? He showed me how to break the cocaine down, put it back together, shift it, put it back together and rewrap it and then put it on the plates. At that time, it wasn't hydraulic. It was a jack, a pump jack, and the pressure of it would hold the cocaine together after you spray acetone on it. You wrap it, you put it back in the machine and it will come out a solid brick. All right. When you say the initial process of opening up the cocaine and then breaking it down, what does breaking it down involve? You break it down to its purest form because the only way to even the coke out to make it if you had we started if you had a half a brick and you took four and a half out it would take 125 grams out 125 grams you put 125 grams of cut you can't put 125 grams of cut just throw it in there because then it won't work out right whoever would get the package will grab the cut you have to break it down to its finest form and blend it until it pulls everything together. What would you use to blend it together? At that time, we was using a hammer. We would shift the hammer and break it down. We would put it in the bags, smash it on the floor at the beginning stages until we started getting better at it. At the beginning stages, we would mash it down. We would use the sandwich bags, the ones for freezers, the freezer shopping bags, we would put them in there, wrap it up twice and smash it down, smash it down to the fullest, purest form. Then you would add the cut to it, shake it in there and you mix it all up. You keep shifting it about 50, 60 times so it could blend in well. And then you would take it out, spray the, you take it out and put it on the table, shift it some more. You spray the acetone in it, then you pull, 
shift it again. When you put it on the plastic, the plastic saran wrap, you spray it lightly, not heavily. If you put too much through it, the moisture and the smell would come through and it would change the color of the cocaine. So we would wrap it up, then put it back in the machine, slide the jack up under it, push the plate up under it. Being that the acetone picks, acetone is what women use for fingernail polish. It holds the coke together to, when you press it together, it goes into this form, the shape of the form, so we held it that way. That's how he sold it. That's how you get the four and a half, nine ounces, and that's how you repeatedly sold it. Okay, now after all this process would happen, would you press it back into the same type of packaging, the mold that is? Yes, you put it in the mold and bring it back to the form that it's supposed to be in. Now, were there other places other than this basement in the apartment you were renting on Marshall Street where these recompressions occurred? Yes, after the owner came back to get the house back, we went back up to Cabani Savage's basement. Okay, did you do recompression in Cabani Savage's basement? Yes. Were there other places that were obtained then as well, including an apartment up on Grant Avenue? Yes, there was an apartment that he shared. Who shared? Him and Marmar. When you say him and Marmar, who are you talking about? Marlon Meacham. And? Kabani Savage. Who is Marlon Meacham? Marlon Meacham was a friend of his, but he became a friend of ours. But Marlon Meacham wasn't into it. He was a working guy. He was around us. He did what he had with us, but he got the apartment because it was in his name. Now, you mentioned that the amounts of cocaine were increased. Is that right? Yes. Okay, going from the late 1990s into the early 2000s, did you do deliveries of cocaine? Yes. Did you pick up money as well? Yes. Okay, who would you deliver cocaine to? Well, Kabani would tell me who to take the cocaine to. I would deliver cocaine to Myron. I took some to Craig Oliver. I took some to Vinny, to Bud, to everybody that was part of us. When you say a part of us, what does that mean? To the people that was among, had been among us, the people that was amongst us. So we were one big family. Did you ever pick up deliveries of cocaine from sources that Kabani Savage had? Yes. Including who? Picked up some from Chuck, from Craig, Bub, from mainly everybody that was dealing with us. All right. When you were talking about Chuck, are you referring to somebody you came to know as Juan Rosado? Yes. Okay. When you mentioned Craig, who is Craig? Craig Oliver. Just a moment. Do you recognize the person in 256? Myron. Myron Wilson? Myron Wilson, yes. I believe this is already in evidence, Your Honor, but if not, I'll move it in as well. It's admitted. No objection. 257. Do you recognize the person? Chuck. This is the person that you knew as Chuck? Yes. Likewise, move in 257 if it's not already in. It's admitted. And you also mentioned a person you knew as Pumpkin. Do you recognize the person depicted in 294? Yes, Pumpkin. How often would you see Pumpkin back in the late 90s? Every day. Your Honor, we move in 294, the photograph of Ronald Walston, also known as Pumpkin. It's admitted. It's admitted. 